computer. Hey. Hey. It's episode 48 of Alex huh. Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That's Jim. And that that's Alex. No? No? What am I doing? <laughs> okay, oh, I think we got it. There we go. No? There we go. That's Alex. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, ah, Zoom. <laughs> ah, Zoom. Uh, uh, what a gift. Yeah. Hey, so before we get into the topic, because when do we do that anyway? But uh, Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That's what we do eventually. That's how yeah. the show should be called. Alex <laughs> and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics eventually. <laughs> that's, the, that's the halfway point of yeah. the podcast. Yeah, and depending on the song, it's often the shortest part. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good chance at that today. Yeah. Um, so, well, hey, what do you think of this Neil Young nonsense? I mean, good for him. Do what, whatever you want. Good That's for cool. him. Yeah, get off of that platform. I don't know. It's getting harder and harder to uh, boycott all the things that deserve to be boycotted. Yeah because it's almost everything. Mm -hmm. Almost everything is infused with uh, dangerous ideas and uh, capitalist greed. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, you really couldn't eat at any restaurant <laughs> chain. Yeah. Or uh, uh, take in any entertainment. Yeah. Because if you poke around the, um, the corporate ladder, eventually you'll get to a weapons manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something, something along those lines or a CEO that doesn't think uh, women should be allowed to go outside right? or something along those lines. So you, we're, I was thinking about this this morning because we were talking about the Neil Young thing. Um, you just have to sort of choose your individual level of uh, distaste for yep. the world and you're like all right i can accept um like i don't care for bill maher and what he's doing but i'm not going to get rid of the uh, hbo because i like the other stuff <laughs> yeah that's on there you know uh, i think yeah i think about that with with uh offensive jokes people get mad about people making offensive jokes and um i think they're it's okay to be offended by it and it's okay to run your mouth and and at the end of the day, I don't know that it means anything that you ran your mouth about about it. And then I also think everybody has a particular, oh, this is a, an offensive joke that's too far from me. Yeah. I realized that a long time ago about myself. And then I thought, well, then I'll just be quiet about it because this is too far for me, but it isn't too far for somebody else. And also there's definitely a too far I'm willing to go for a joke that I like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like I I have so many jokes in my act about suicide and about um, alcoholism and and while I'm not punching down, I'm not really punching up either. I'm more just punching out. Yeah, and, or you're punching yourself a lot. Yeah, I do that a lot. Absolutely. So I just kind of let everybody do that themselves and I stopped participating in any conversations about whether or not such and such comedian should make such and such joke. Yeah. Because it just seemed, it also just seems very hypocritical as a stand-up comedian to do that because you know as a comic, the second you think of a really offensive joke that's really funny, you'll yeah, tell it. Because you'll abandon any principles you thought you had. Yep. Because your underlying principle should always be as a comedian, oh, this should this is funny. That should that should be it. Yeah. I, I think so anyway. Yes. To the yeah, to the point of um th I think then you're you have to draw a distinction between offending people and uh misinformation and disinformation campaigns. Yeah. Um hurt you know actually hurting people yeah that's bad that's no good yeah and i think a lot of people think well i was offended by like a curse word 
and yeah. that hurts me. And I'm like, well, that's not the same flavor. You yeah, well, you won't die in a month because of that. No. No, you're thinking of uh, ivermectin. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the same. Um, it is a minefield to suss out, and uh, most people are not well equipped. Yeah, I don't. And I don't consider myself particularly well equipped to navigate it. Yeah, very yeah. case by case. The giant shame of the Joe Rogan thing is he's such a cement head. <laughs> <laughs> he's just. I don't think he has bad intentions. I really don't. I think he just got more than a guy like him is intellectually equipped to handle. Yes. Yeah. And the bigger problem with him is not who he is or how he behaves. It's that that guy can garner a following that size. Whereas uh, somebody who knows what they're talking about can't get anybody to listen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's also the if people who liked him would just listen to him and recognize he's a cement head, but they love him, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. And I, a lot of them do. I yeah. do, you know, I do talk to people who are like, I listen to Joe Rogan. I don't, I don't believe everything he says, but I like him. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but fine. I mean, I guess we do similar things where we watch like a TV show that we know is bad. Sure. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. And I can't quantify why I'm enjoying it. Like I watch Ozark, um, which is bad. <laughs> it's not a good show. Yeah. Um, but it's a show where stuff constantly happens. My friend Walker, things. My friend Walker, who's very, very smart, particularly politically, he's very up on things that um, I would say he competes with anybody who works on your show who has to be up on it yeah but he's just very wonky in that regard and he watches bill maher and i've talked to him about that because well we talk about everything but uh because we have lunch once a week but you know my opinion on bill maher is he's got some really jacked up opinions now because he's just a rich old man yeah and he, 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 his answer is like, yeah, but you know, I, I enjoy his guests. And sometimes the, I, sometimes the conversation is really interesting. That's fair. So, so that's what he decides. And what I decide is just, I can't stomach it. So I'll, I'll not watch Bill Maher anymore. All right. But so you don't believe he should be driven out of town. No. No, absolutely not. If he, well, and if he leaves town, he will be driven out because he's very rich and he'll fucking have a job. Right. He won't live. <laughs> he's yes. a driver and he'll pretend to be a regular dude. Yeah. yeah he, no. he pretends to be Joe Rogan, which is annoying. Yeah, that's probably even worse. I think so. Because he's not stupid. No. But he does know that that's where audience is. Although he is stupid-ish. <laughs> stupid because his views on vaccines are stupid too. And he tries to ride the line where he goes, well, you know, I'm not anti-medicine. And then he'll say something and you're like, yeah, you are. You're just slightly less, you dummy. Mm. And you believe things for religious reasons, even though you're an atheist. A lot of the beliefs he comes to are not based on reason. Huh. He's, he has a lot of like when he talks about what he doesn't like about vaccines, it, he's it's a faith based reason because he doesn't have an underlying bit of research to say why. Yeah, something feels true. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that drives me nuts about the atheist community in general. They have beliefs. It shouldn't be that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of them just have beliefs. Yeah. Like, I'm fine. There's probably not a God. I mean, look around, but, <laughs> um, but that's, but then don't, I guess, maybe people are just like that. Maybe I'm complaining about human nature. Yeah, I think ultimately we are. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah. 
What is it? Is it Vonnegut? I can't remember the quote. Can you remember the quote? It's just basically like we're a, a, a tragic story about apes whose brains got too big <laughs> and uh, thought they could handle everything and can't really do much more than apes can. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, that's <laughs> way paraphrased, but... But but I think delivers probably just about what was said. So that's good. He does say um, the biggest tragedy about mankind is that they believe every problem has a solution. Ah, that's like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, no, some of them <laughs> can't be solved. That's interesting because, you know, sometimes a philosophy I have that I got, I, think, I believe, from the Taoists. Uh, that actually we'll get to Billy Joel pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, but that works for me sometimes. Is I if I if I can absolutely recognize that there's a situation I can't fix, I I, I get a very peaceful feeling. I've, I've ah. worked on that. I've worked on that. It's very useful. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'll keep you alive an extra three or four years. Yeah, and even if it doesn't, you'll enjoy the last two pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna look into that. Yeah. It's it's not. Not, you got to practice it. You really do have to practice it. I started it young. There's a, it started with a theory I had in my 20s that started to work for me to make me less mad, which is I would choose to find things funny that aren't necessarily obviously funny, like really horrible things happening. Mm -hmm. like, you know, like getting, you know, getting in a brutal car accident and then having your knee jacked up and trying to find the funny parts about that because it just edges you forward a little easier right and you heal better too so yeah yeah and now <laughs> i just think it's funny that we got all the way to dallas yeah <laughs> and we have to backtrack <laughs> billy joel who is not a Taoist. No. What he's, do you think he is? He might be a cement head. <laughs> it is. He's, just, he's a, a, a very loving, giving cement head. He just yeah. is. He just is. Specific bit of brilliance that's, that's always been funny that he has that. It's just... <laughs> it is. It, it's very funny to listen to him play like Vienna. Uh, in concert or something and then you know he'll talk to the audience between songs and gesture with his hands and you're like how can you play a piano with those hands yeah tiny stubby weird little anti-piano hands yep and it's like god bless you there was all, uh, all of that has to be a little bit harder for you <laughs> <laughs> which yeah, makes it so impressive that weird gift of music you know i have this weird thing that happens when i'll just be singing because i sing a lot in circumstances where you shouldn't uh because <laughs> to get through the day so i'll just be in public to be doing something and just kind of singing along with a song that's going on or singing to myself i'm aware i'm doing it it's just a way to get through the day and uh I will oftentimes have somebody go, oh my God, you have a beautiful voice. And they're just wrong. <laughs> I don't. And it's funny, I'm like, but there's something innate in me that needs to sing. I find it very, I, I find a need to do that. And not everybody has that. Yeah. But what I don't have is <laughs> a voice that people would enjoy hearing do that. <laughs> but without a piano, without anything for you to know how off I am of the song, I sound pretty good. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like I, I'm in this key, whatever it is. It's yeah. probably the wrong one. Yeah, this is this key probably doesn't exist, but <laughs> I'm doing is good. Yeah. So we're talking about Shameless, which actually Alex has brought up a number of times because uh, Garth Brooks does a cover of it, which I believe you said you prefer the Garth Brooks version. Yes. Um. I do. I actually listening to the Billy Joel version this morning. I was like, oh, he, it sounds really thin. Yeah. Um, instrumentally and vocally. I mean, after listening to Garth Brooks, I'm sure if I had never heard the Garth Brooks version, 
I would feel differently about it. Sure. But it does sound like karaoke. <laughs> a little bit. That's funny. It's often uh, and it's a weird song that doesn't fit any genre really. Okay, here's what I thought. He's R and B singing, but the music is very pop. Yeah, you know who it reminds me of. I don't think he's. I don't think this is a case of him aping this other person, yeah. but it reminds me of a Bruce Springsteen song. Wow. Okay, I could see that. And it reminds me of a Bruce Springsteen song that if it came on, you know, a playlist or I would go, uh, eh, all right, I'll listen <laughs> to this. It doesn't remind me of a great Bruce Springsteen song or a bad one. One of those a thousand middle ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thematically, I agree with that. It's sort of like uh, taking the hit on this one. Yeah. Which is a... Uh, not common for Billy Joel, but probably a lot more common for Bruce. Yeah. Where it's like, um, I'm approaching this situation incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> damage to my own self. Yeah. Um, whereas Billy Joel, we know his preferred method of communication is like, I, you're approaching the situation poorly yeah. and I have advice for you because yeah. I'm smart. I'm smart and I drink the exact right amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, the other thing that popped into my mind is this is a song in need of an ending. I don't like the fade out. No, and it could kind of from the beginning it could only fade out. Yeah, it doesn't wasn't set up to end. Yeah, um, it's really like washy. Yeah. Uh, instrumentation and the background vocals and those the very... background vocals sound like meatloaf background vocals too the <laughs> ladies have such there's a point when the lady has such a very high voice yeah and and she's really screaming you know kind of but the song doesn't merit that it's it doesn't quite fit right yeah it's it's a mess yeah is a bit of a mess it's it's um, i like the lyrics when we get to that i really like the lyrics because of exactly what you said which is that oh this is your fault great yeah uh well we were talking about last week how um we did uh, we talked about everybody loves you now where he was mad at a lady for being hot <laughs> <laughs> as far as we could tell not much else was going on right uh, which is kind of a recurring theme. He'd be mad at a lady for various things. Yeah. Or he'd like a lady for uh, sort of antiquated reasons. Sure. Like, ah, oh, I think you're really great because you do what I say. <laughs> <Stuff like that. laughs> Whatever that song was. <laughs> Just the way you are. Uh, yeah. yeah, kind of. Yeah, even though it's very always cool. a woman. Yeah. I like you because you're duplicitous. Like, well, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> um, and this one, he's kind of like, oh, my behavior has gone off the rails because I like you. Yeah. And oh, aha. Uh -huh. Truly, I mean, the first, last week's song, I think he was probably 19 when he wrote it. Yeah. This one, he was probably 60. <laughs> yeah. So maybe the perspective finally caught up with him. Yeah, it's funny when that happens to you, too. And it, and, I think it's good if it happens about the same woman and you get a chance to apologize. <laughs> yeah, uh, which we uh, empirically know is not the case here. No. Yeah. I think he's married to his third or fourth wife. <laughs> yeah. song came out. Maybe this is the song you write when you're not going to get divorced. Maybe. I don't know. Or then he did anyway, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know where it falls on his divorce timeline. That's it's I don't know that I, I had this idea the other day that I understand people getting married and I understand people getting divorced. All those both things make sense to me. Yeah. The second marriage is just tough to understand. <laughs> the uh, divorce thing. What did somebody I Somebody said, like, a divorce is always good news. 
because it means that people are finally made the decision to put an end to their suffering. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's a sweet way to look at it. Um, I think divorce has come about in all kinds of different ways. <laughs> it's probably not always good news. No. Sometimes it's one person running to save their physical life. True. A friend, uh, a mutual like friend of ours. They did. A mutual friend of ours got divorced and his ex-wife just seems to have disappeared off the planet. Oh. And I, I hope she's okay. And I, I hope that what happened is she went, I don't need to be friends with any of these idiots. I hope that's what happened. <laughs> that's a there's a very good chance. Yeah. What I know is that she oh, was, yeah, she was pursuing acting and I looked at her IMDB just because I was like, oh, I wonder what she's up to. I hope she's okay. And her last IMDB credit was a thing her ex had put her in when they were still married. I was like, oh, yeah. mm. that's probably how well she's doing. Oh, we're good. Maybe found something else to pursue. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully she was, she was, she did have a uh, passion for drinking. So, oh, well, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm not saying names because, you know, but, yeah, good. but I hope, anyway, I hope she's okay. And I hope my friend, <laughs> he's fine. He's doing great. Okay, good. Now, I, having said, I don't understand. So my thought is I don't understand getting married again because you already know people are terrible and you <laughs> found out that you can't live with that. The next person is just going to be a person. Right. Because Mary Jo knows that I'm terrible, but she likes me and I like her too, despite the fact that she's a human being. So we've figured out we enjoy that. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you that everybody's terrible. Yeah, in some, well, I don't, well, we just talked about it. We're all dumb apes who, you know, I mean it in that sense. I mean it in that sense. Yeah, yeah. That we all have, have some terrible. Yeah, but I'm objectively wrong in the sense that I have two friends, our friend Paul Goebel, for example, who he's terrible. Have, he has a second marriage that is fantastic. Oh, good. Him and his wife could not be better for each other. He's become a better person because of her. She has... I think just maintained. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a good joke. That's a good joke. That's a good joke. Um, all right, so let's talk about these lyrics. Um, do you want to go first? Um, I could go first. All right. Um, I was, <laughs> it was very funny. This never happens when you try to pull up the lyrics to a Billy Joel song. I first got a TV show called Shameless. <laughs> And then I got like two other songs with the, this title by different people. <laughs> and I finally had to go. Normally, I just Google the song title, right? Yeah. And then I was like, well, well let me do uh, shameless lyrics. And I was like, nope, that's some other lady's song. <laughs> shameless lyrics, Billy Joel. OK, finally. Yep. I, uh, I'm, I am actually on BillyJoel.com. Ah. Backslash so, or forward slash song forward slash shameless dash six if you want to follow along at home <laughs> you went right to the source yep um well well starts with <laughs> L. you know how i feel about that <laughs> no no better ramp well i'm shameless when it comes to loving you i'd do anything you want me to I'd do anything at all. I guess that's a thesis sentence, if there ever was one. Yep. I, uh, shameless is by itself an interesting word. It really is. Fourth in, in terms of a relationship. Yeah. Um, you're probably not being asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants you to behave shamelessly, I think, for them. Yeah. Have some boundaries. It is a powerful, uh, it is a powerful thing to say to a person, and you're either giving them a lot of power that they'll enjoy, hopefully in a in a nice relationship, or you are 
too much. I think you're too much. I think you're a handful. I think you're a bit much. And I think, you know, it's funny, if you've ever been in that kind of relationship, I think the person enjoys it at first. Yes. Because they like feeling, you know. Like, Everyone likes to have power. Who was the one Frank Sinatra said he'd crawl on his hands and knees for? What was the lady? Oh. Anyway, anyway, there was a lady Frank Sinatra said he'd crawl on his hands, and she's very famous was it, for being pretty. She's famous, <laughs> a pretty actress. Ah, could it be Marilyn Monroe? No, it wasn't Marilyn, although I'm sure he would have been happy if that had worked out too. <laughs> but no, um, it was more a classic. Not that she's not classic, but anyway, it was the same idea. It was the same idea that, and it was a well known at the time that he just, I think even he hooked up with her when she was married or something. Oh boy. Yeah. And, uh, but okay. yeah, I think you like that at first, but then eventually you're like, damn it, you know, because that other person's then doesn't have any identity right or strength of their own and you want certainly an equal partner and they probably want to hang and they, they're going to make demands even though they say they won't because why don't you want to hang out with me tonight because i don't want to hang out with you every night because i got other things to do you're very shameless and that's awkward to be around a uh friend Your behavior is very unpredictable when you don't have any shame yep and yeah. that's hard shame that's is hard to like Netflix and chill with. Yeah. <laughs> a friend of mine I know has had a, his lady had that, I'm trying to remember, uh, she had little, literally clinical nymphomania. Oh boy. And, but was faithful. And when they first got together, he thought it was great. Sure. Turns out it's not. Huh because in the clinical sense it is unpleasant for the person who has it who feels who would cry if she couldn't have sex oh yeah because there was this under and and there's there and it turned out there was not there wasn't all mental stuff it was physiological stuff that drove that which makes sense chemical wow. stuff you, so you'd think that'd be great if you're a dumb 20 year old, oh, that'd be the best. And then eventually you're like, yeah, but sometimes you want to have a cup of coffee or you want to <laughs> take a walk. Sure. Or you just want to stop. I, um, I worked at a round table pizza in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. In college, I think in college. And, um, there's a guy who owned the franchise and his daughter worked there and i thought she was real cute and i asked her out and she said sure i'd like to go out and then later that day her dad called me and said hey um i know you want to go out with my daughter that's great and everything um but i don't think you should because she's a clinical nymphomaniac oh and i even at that age i was like oh uh, okay I, I don't want any part of that probably <laughs> especially also because your dad is signing my paychecks and we're all <laughs> right here in this tiny round table together <laughs> okay and then he didn't pay anybody oh that's not good and <laughs> everyone quit except me and I kept working there for tips and I remember uh, eventually I was standing out front with a poster board it was like round table doesn't pay its <laughs> employees it went really poorly and that has nothing to do with her condition no it is the end of the story of the round table guy <laughs> <laughs> uh i remember that round table i'm pretty sure i ate at it yeah, it was over there at like prince or fort lowell or something oh, i'm pretty sure it wasn't that great no yeah anyway all of which is to say that you think the guy who's, who will do anything for you is the best, but also that might be the guy who beats up your friend that's just your friend. Yeah. Shameless is a double-edged sword. Yeah. And yeah. And I still really like the lyric because it's, it's, 
and I'm standing here for all the world to see. There ain't that much left of me that has very far to fall. <laughs> oh boy. Boy, man, and wow, I'm shameless. I'll do anything at all for you, but just so you know, I ain't got much to offer. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, on first listening, I was like, oh, this sounds very selfless and like he's taking the hit. And the more I listen to it, I'm like, this is selfish behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to say like, I'm a husk. You yeah. have to do everything. It's a bit of love bombing too, isn't it? It is love bombing. It is... Uh, a demanding yeah it's very demanding it's like i have nothing so whatever happens here is on you yeah i offer nothing <laughs> I i'm a husk I and also i want you to be attracted to me even though i have uh, no confidence that's I'm, a big ask i offer nothing but you can have all of it Hey, I've timed everything super poorly, and I really have to pee. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So I'm going to go do that. Why don't you uh, tell folks uh, about the big giveaway? I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so while Alex is uh, is back there, I, if you can guess what's behind me ahead of time, then you can guess what the, the secret lyrics are today. If you, uh, for those of you who don't remember, the secret lyrics are when uh, Alex has to guess what Billy Joel song the picture behind me is referencing. And this one is either really hard or really easy. I don't know which. It is a song that we've talked about before, which narrows it down to 47 songs. So which is a lot of songs. And, uh, and if you guess, I'll, well, you'll get a bag full of whatever that is. Great. Welcome back. <laughs> it's good to be back. Um, we normally record these in the evening. Yep. And I've got my schedule rolling. And then uh, I got up late today and had a lot of coffee. Nice. You don't need the details, probably. Oh, yeah. Coffee will run through you, man. See, I, I am different from the character in this song in that I feel some shame. <laughs> <laughs> Last Tuesday, I was with a friend and I had a cup of coffee and I don't really drink a lot of coffee. And I'm a child, by the way. When I have when I say coffee, I mean a mocha. Okay. There's always chocolate in it or something. I don't drink <laughs> coffee and I can't. And uh, the first time I tried to drink coffee as an adult was doing comedy because I didn't know just how much caffeine there is in it. Ah, yeah. How good that feels. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. This will help me do comedy because you'll go on car trips and it'll you'll keep you awake. Yeah. But that's not true because you go on a car trip and you're like, I have to stop every 40 minutes. Yeah. Because my body is pushing everything out. <laughs> yes because I'm poisoning myself and my body is trying to save me <laughs> uh, by constantly shitting. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. Not ideal. Anyway, I'm standing here for all the world to see. There ain't that much left of me that has very far, far to fall. It's funny to me that that's the very second lyric. Really in crisis mode, super fast. We did not build to this. <laughs> There's no... Hello. I'm falling apart. Yep. And you know what? I, I will say lyrically, that's great. That is great. They always say in writing that you have to start in the middle of the action. Yeah. Why are we meeting this person today? Oh, because he's spinning out. Yep. And to point out, too, that this is, I think, unique, that the, the first two uh, verses that we talked about are just three lines each that's it there's three lines each yeah they communicate a hell of a lot <laughs> yeah of really unpleasantness <laughs> it really does <laughs> um very unusual for him yeah um lyrically and yeah. standpoint wise i'm trying to think about the rest of that album and whether it had a lot of that same vibe or not. I feel like not. 
No, I don't think so. I think you're right. I think this. Uh, I it think did have some lady worship on it. Yeah. Um. So he was clearly in the throes of something. Yeah. And you know, I think this is not meant to convey this character's entire personality and approach to the world. I think it's meant to uh, convey a feeling we all have sometimes in a relationship or certainly at the very beginning sometimes where you're like, oh, I'm, you know, quite literally falling for someone and you kind of like everything that is true about you sort of falls away and you're like, oh, I'm only this now. Yeah. I am shameless. I'm focused. <laughs> that could be a lovely feeling for a little while. And if it graduates to something more mature, that's nice. But and even if it doesn't, it was still nice. Yeah, that's a good point. That it is um, the end all be all of this person. One hopes. Yeah. <laughs> and he does get to it here. You know, I'm not a man who has ever been insecure about the world I've been living in. I don't break easy. I have my pride. But if you need to be satisfied, that's an interesting little turn where he's like, blaming her. It's back to blaming her. <laughs> like, I have all these characteristics, but if you need to be satisfied. <laughs> um, I think that's a common tactic among people who were like, I'm. I will do anything for you. I'm powerless. Yeah. It's all on you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is a way to exercise power and control. True. It is a way to get it. It's depending upon where this happens in the relationship, because if this happens at the beginning, that's a bit romantic. Yeah. If it happens later, it's a bit manipulative. I'm trying to get you to not leave because you'll be afraid what will happen to me. Yes. So like, oh. Well, this clearly, I think, feels like the beginning of something. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think we can give them the, the rare Jim and Alex benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, my opinion of this dude is swinging left and right. But um, yeah, I think it's early. I think the general sense is that he is shocked by this feeling that has come over him. Yeah. And he's just uh, saying all of it. And he, yeah, and he, you're, you're right, because he's juxtaposing it against this is how I normally am. Yep. Lordy, you. Oh my goodness. Right. And then, as you said, he says, I have my pride, but if you need me to be satisfied, which leads into, I'm shameless, baby. <laughs> I'm shameless, baby. <laughs> I don't have a prayer. And I te anytime I see you standing there, I go down upon my knees. Um, that's lovely, actually. I mean, just because poetically, all we're saying is that just even just seeing you destroys me. Yeah. In the nice way. And, and uh, I know that certainly I have felt that way, being destroyed sure. by a particular lady. I hope that you have many times. Sure. I, I often tell the story. I never dated this girl. There was a girl who used to come into the store I worked at, and I found it hard to look at her. Yeah. And it wasn't, yeah, she had a lovely body and all of that. It was her eyes. <laughs> had such warm, kind, and, and for some reason, she enjoyed talking to me. And we would get in these long conversations and I realized at some point I realized, oh man, if I were a single man, but I was not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is a girl I could just be absolutely ruined by. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I, and, and nothing happened because nothing was going to happen. And I certainly never was going to make a move because I was smart enough to know that I'm just not equipped for this. Um, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. It was just, very funny to me that and then I and I think at some point she did realize and I think she enjoyed that because she would just come to the store and see me and then at some point I'm like I don't think she's shopping hmm 
<laughs> huh. Huh. She uh, maybe just enjoying destroying a little bit. Yep, and enjoying the, you know, and because there's no way she was feeling the exact, there's just no way. Maybe there is a way. Maybe I'm really insecure. Way. Of course there's a way. Yeah, but <laughs> Lord, was she pretty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, th that's the only thing that'll stick you in the, the shameless vibe for a long time. It's like, oh, no, nothing happened. Well, if something happened, then you can sort of snap out of your shamelessness. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, now, now I have multiple things to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I just have this sort of warm memory of her, which is nice. And there was never anything stupid, which is so, so nice. Uh, how uh, Taoist is it to uh, be satisfied with a warm memory of a thing like that? Oh, I guess that's it. Yeah, true. And I truly am. It's a nice thing. Yeah. Oh, it. sure. It's like, what a lovely. And I think, I think, well, you know, dating her would have been amazing, but also knowing that I never jacked that up is pretty amazing too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got, a, I've got a, a handful of those to hang on to. <laughs> well into hospice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Where am I? You are and on my knees. down on my knees. I like the beginning of this, the beginning of this one. I like mm -hmm. a lot. And I'm changing. I swore I'd never compromise. Yes, we're familiar. <laughs> but you convinced me otherwise. I'll do anything you please. No, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about a million different songs where he didn't compromise <laughs> at all. <laughs> I was like, this is the way things are. Cha -cha -cha. Oh, yeah. She, she, she's actually made him a little bit better because she's convinced. He's now thought, oh, maybe compromise is okay. But also, it's funny that he's like, oh, see how awful things are now. I'm even willing to compromise. <laughs> right. But, yeah. It, it is funny that I'll do anything you please uh, is preceded by the idea of compromising. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would do anything for you, even compromise. Yeah. Even consider the restaurant you wanted. That's how far I've fallen. There's <laughs> nothing wanna, left of me. I want to point out how clever I think this is, and it's not something he now normally does lyrically. I'm shameless, baby, uh, okay. followed by, and I'm changing. Those things don't rhyme, but there's something yeah. nice. What am I trying to say? But and I'm changing is a nice lyrical shift from it, and I'm shameless. That's nice on the ears, and it's not a trick he pulls very often. Yeah, it's just like the same vowel sound. Yeah. What is that called? Assonance is what that's called. Okay. It doesn't rhyme, but it uses the same vowel sound. Yeah, so it feel it sounds nice to you, and he doesn't do that. He does. This, he doesn't do a ton of that. He does this thing rhymes, and I need it to rhyme so badly that I picked not quite the right phrase. <laughs> yeah, but this one is just lyrically really nice, and I'm changing. Wow. Yeah. And now, that's also a sentiment that never comes from him. <laughs> true. True. Maybe that's why it happened. <laughs> Most a lot of his songs could just be titled I, I won't be changing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, and he literally has a lyric, don't go changing. Yeah. Yeah. From the album, how many years can you tolerate this? <laughs> <laughs> don't go changing, or I'll be mad. Yeah. And he went from that to I'm changing. I swore I'd never compromise, but oh well. <laughs> You are now, and now he says something that oh that just is sad but it's a good admission you see in all my life i've never found what i couldn't resist what i couldn't turn down i could walk away from anyone i ever knew but i can't walk away from you so for sure this character possibly billy joel <laughs> has been really found it fairly easy to abandon the situation if it turned away he didn't like and that yeah. certainly would be 
uh, something, a person who's multi multiply divorced, that's probably true of that person. <laughs> yes. Um, it's also a good window into this idea of like, this uh, shamelessness is uh, new. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I don't do this every time. Yeah. Um, but it is an extreme and probably very accurate portrayal of his earlier life. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I can walk away from anything. <laughs> um, which we know he did. Yeah. Romantically and musically. And uh, he left New York and, you know, he walked away from <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, kind of melon, is a little bit of melancholy in there and a little bit of sadness and I guess a little bit of hope. A little bit. It's also yeah. like, oh, yeah. I can only behave in extreme fashions. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm either completely callous. Yeah. Or completely under someone else's control. Yeah. I don't, I, I bipolar. <laughs> yeah. But as you stated pretty well at the beginning, under somebody else's control, by my choice, and really, that's my control. Really, for being honest, yes. my way of controlling the situation. Yeah, tough. That's a tough one. That's interesting. All right, you're you're up, my friend. Uh, I have never let anything have this much control over me because I work too hard to call my life my own. Yes, I made myself a world. Okay. Uh, and it worked so perfectly. But it's your world now. I can't refuse. I've never had so much to lose. I'm shameless. Really, now you're really loading all the responsibility onto her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little bit romantic to say that I had all this stuff before, but it doesn't compare to you. But Lord, that's a lot of burden. Yeah. yeah. I created a world. Yeah. But now it doesn't matter because you're pretty. <laughs> now everything is under your control. Yeah. So all that said, where do you want to order from? <laughs> Well, I, I wanted Indian food, but now I feel bad saying it. <laughs> I know you don't like it, but you'll compromise. <laughs> and you'll, you'll like act all weird and resentful. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's pretty funny. It's it's funny because I've never had so much to lose. Is again, a nice sentiment. But, but sometimes you can overload somebody with nice romantic sentiments to where it's like oh this is a little catastrophic yeah how about uh i never had so much to look forward to yeah yeah hey oh uh, that'll be nice <laughs> going out with you yeah yeah I, I, could, uh, I could try indian food i like their bread yeah tell you what why don't we order some indian some italian I'll have my pasta and I'll eat some of the naan. There you go. We'll get the garlic naan, please. Oh, yes. It goes better with the pasta. It with the pasta. I'm not going to eat the vindaloo just to make you happy. <laughs> I'm not shameless. But I guess it's a terrible song. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, we've written so many alternate songs on the show. It's one of my favorite parts. Like, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's from a different album. It's from a different album. Oh, no Vindaloo for me. <laughs> My brother, by the way, is in a band called, yeah. called Vindaloo. Wow. Fantastic. And I'm not sure why they called it Vindaloo, other than all, all names of all bands and comedy groups are on some level kind of dumb. It's all, yeah, all embarrassing. You had to name it something. Foo Fighters isn't a great name. It's a great oh. band. It's a great band. Um, see, I feel like the 
uh, the requirement should be, is it fun to say? And I think Vindaloo fits the bill. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And my brother's a very good drummer. And uh, so I'm happy he's in a band again because he did that thing where he had a bunch of kids and was responsible. So now he can be in a band now that they're out of the house. Great. Yeah. Yeah. My brother. I love uh, bands of 50 year old dudes. Me too. Me too. Well, I possible. happen to know several. <laughs> huh? I happen to know several. Oh, that's awesome. Great. They're so much happier yep. in a band than 20 year olds are. You're right. Because their expectations are exactly, their expectations are, I'd like to be in a band. Yeah. If yep. it were to happen, great. But I mean, there's a not a lot of sweating over how many people might show up. True. Yeah. We're like, who cares? This is for us. Yeah. Yeah, I've done stand-up shows like that with, you know, there's this uh, show they do once a year called The Old Folks Show, a friend of mine puts on, <laughs> and he has just old comics on it. Right. And the young comics sometimes come and they're welcome, but sometimes there's an audience, actually most of the time there is, but even if there wasn't, that's not why it's there. It's there to go, oh, it's nice that you're not dead. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, wait, no, hey, looks like nobody here had a stroke. I can tell by the way you're doing your set. We've already won. Yep. Doesn't matter how anyone does. <laughs> you know, it should be easy for a man who's strong to say he's sorry or admit when he's wrong. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. No <laughs> argument. I've never lost anything I ever missed, but I've never been in love like this. Nice. Nice. Suspect. Yeah. It's well, and then immediately this is where it becomes. It's out of my hands. Yeah. So whose hands is it in? So <laughs> I'm in, I'm shameless. I don't have the power now, but I don't want it anyhow. Now, this is a good sentiment. So I've got to let it go. It's almost like at that point, maybe he's talking to himself. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I hope so because if you're saying that to yourself that's a good thing to say I don't have the power now but I don't want it anyhow so I've got to let it go that's when you're deciding to be a better partner right when you're like as long as you're not saying like I'm going to give it to you yeah I'm giving you all the power yeah that, if he's saying like I'm going to give up trying to control things and uh, you also do that, which is healthy. Yeah. So I feel um, that feels like what this lyric means, except for every lyric that went before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it would be nice if this was him realizing, like, oh, this is an unfair burden. Yeah. I guess what I'm really saying is, <laughs> I I don't want power, I, but I'm handing you all the responsibility. I want to give, so I, I'm inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt that that's what this means. I'm hopeful because I like this lyric feels like an acknowledgement of that, that nonsense of being able to leave really easy and not caring at all and also having all this control wasn't healthy. Yeah. So I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful that that's what he means. <laughs> um, let's see what we got left i'm shameless <laughs> shameless as a man can be you can make a total fool of me i just wanted you to know <laughs> <laughs> i kind of like um it's better than like you can make a total fool of me please do yeah. please do that to me um he's just saying like i'm just warning you uh, I've given up all power and control over my own life, and you should know that. I just love that. That's uh, the lyric. I love that. That's the last lyric. Just wanted you to know. Just wanted you to know. Uh, which is a great thing to say to somebody who obviously knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no control over anything, and I feel I've never been this. I'm spiraling. 
yeah, by the time someone tells you they're spiraling, you're like, yes, I can see you. Ah, uh, I want you. There was a girl I uh, was obsessed with for a while, and I wrote her poetry. Uh huh. And uh, I'm a decent poet. I'm all right. And um, I will write. God bless. Written a lovely poems for my wife, and written poems about whatever. And but I wrote poems for this girl. And do you know how many poems girls like? Yeah, not many. Two. Oh, two is good. Do you know how many they don't like? <laughs> is it three? Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I will tell you that at the time, I was pretty shameless. <laughs> yeah. And then this would be like if in the 15th poem, you were like, I just wanted you to know. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Went to the well uh, 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 too many times. <laughs> yeah, established the pattern with the second poem. <laughs> and then the, any like poems five onward uh, just are evidence. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. They're, they're... Like, well, I better start. I better save these in case. Or the judge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When do you order a ring doorbell? <laughs> Four, four poems. <laughs> yep, yep, that's when yeah, that's when you can start showing friends, and you're like, so if something happens, right, all right, text me when you get to the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Especially I know. an Indian restaurant. Yep. Ah, Vindaloo. I'll meet you I anytime have... you want. <laughs> hey, play us out, Vindaloo. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would pan over. <laughs> My, five guys in skinny ties <laughs> yeah, they play uh it's funny they don't what music do you think vindaloo plays if you were to guess yeah you would think uh indian music <laughs> yeah uh the doors um uh, you know uh clapton song yes classic rock covers pretty much yeah stuff you'd hear on the like am radio at this point that's what you hear from Vindaloo. I am in my head picturing them at like the Troubadour with a pretty full house. And then just like one Indian cook in the back <laughs> who's furious. Every time they started a new song, he just gets angrier and angrier. <laughs> when are they going to play Indian music? Come on. And uh, he, just, we just still uh, use the name. He starts to piece it together when he looks and he's like, just a regular guitar, a drum. They're not going to play. Wait a minute. I don't see a tabla. <laughs> uh, oh. Four hours off a week. Now I know I must just close the lyrics by just saying it's just a bunch of repeating how he's shameless. The lady with the high voice and it fades out and it needs an ending. Yeah, but it never was going to have one. Yeah. You could have ended it. So here's how you could have ended it, because it's got that. I don't know what instruments you use for this or, or he used for this. I think you use a, a synthesizer. Or a, yeah, it was a little orchestral. There's a lot of lead guitar. Yeah. And at the beginning, it does this. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba, right. Mm -hmm. It leads into it. You could have keep, closed. It sounded like a harpsichord. You could have closed more or less with that note. I think uh -huh. that'd be the club, but yeah, be kind of unsatisfying. Yeah, go out like the stranger kind of. Yeah. I'm done singing and now here's a little instrumental. Yeah. Uh, back porch. Yeah, I think that would have been it because I don't, you're, you're probably right that it needs to fade out, but this is a song that doesn't feel good that way either. No. There's some flaw, flaws in the flaws in the uh, I guess the arrangement really. Yeah, yeah. Flaws if you hate the fade out because I don't think that's a universal feeling. True. I feel like that's maybe you. That's a you thing. It is, but I don't. I like it sometimes. Like you remember there was the song we talked about that was uh, one of Billy Joel's songs. That's an old timey '50s sounding song, and I'm like. Fado was the right thing because that's how every one of those songs would have been. True. 
Yeah, but you're right. I do kind of really like a nice ending. Just like a nice you ending. Get me out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think thematically with the guy who's spiraling out of control. Oh, you know what? Okay. About right. Okay. I guess it's hard, yeah. it's hard to put a hard ending to your spiral. I guess if I look at it as the implication that, yeah, and after the song ends, he's still spiraling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The song might end, but all the stuff in it is going to keep going for a while. Yeah, that's true. It's it's like the ending of Friends. You don't need to see them get to the coffee shop. You're like, okay, they, they're just still friends. That's fine. You don't need to <laughs> continue and see the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can build the rest of it. Yeah. All right. Cool. I buy that then. I I guess. Yeah. I just don't love the fit. Yeah. I don't love the fino. Just never. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe it's my musical theater fondness because none of those uh, songs would ever fade out. They're all designed to end. Yeah. Big finish. Yeah. And I like and I, so probably because I like story songs. I really love story songs. I, it has occurred to me. When's the last time you saw a movie based on a song? It's been a long time, right? You think it's been a long time? I don't think they do think that. Anymore. Yeah, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, that used to be a thing. It was like, like sure. probably five or six Kenny Rogers songs that became movies. Ode to Billy Joe became a movie. Uh, hey. Probably a bunch more that just ended up, but not anymore. We don't do that anymore. But also, they don't write songs like that anymore. I feel like it might still be going on on like the country side of the world. As they still have a lot of their story songs. Oh, yeah. OK. And I like story songs. Enjoy I think it. there's a whole like country music to TV movie pipeline that we don't have access to. Oh, OK. I don't know. It seems likely. The, the debut on TNN? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. <laughs> There might be a whole world over there. Yeah, that's true. That's for another podcast. Another, po and Lord knows we have many more podcasts. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. All right. Well, listen, I am in front of something. Um, I, I were to looks, move, there's, there's not much more to see. Yeah, I was going to say your moving doesn't help much. No. Nope. Um, I feel like I'm looking at the side of an ant farm. <laughs> <laughs> that could be dirt. Yeah, closer to dirt than ants, but it's a very, spe it's a specific thing that you get, yeah. that you, you go and get. So you go and get this. got this. Like uh, mulch? <laughs> you might get people would potting get. soil? Um, pro this is difficult to get. Oh, is it now? Yeah. Huh. Um. This could be ore of some kind, like uh, chromium. Uh, well, <laughs> you got the right song. It's Iron and Coke. And Iron and Coke, Allentown. Allentown, yeah. As I said during the pee break, uh, uh -huh. folks at home, if they could guess what this was, I figured this was either a, a really easy one or a difficult one, and I wasn't sure which. I thought it was very difficult. And then I was like, oh, right, or. Yeah, iron and coke, chrome and steel. Fantastic. Yeah, Allentown, great song, which I believe we've already covered. I think we did, yes, yeah. I think early. So Feels like an early one. Now, I did something you did last week. I did this week. When I, when I get to picking the song, I'll let you do trivia first, but I did the same thing you did. I thought, oh, I like that thing, so I'm going to pick a song inspired by this the song you picked for this week oh. i like that i thought that i don't do that always and i may not do it again but i did it this week <laughs> great um all right for trivia courtesy of sue oh nice um we know uh billy joel and garth brooks both recorded shameless yep they both had a top 40 hit with it where did it land on the charts for each of them Top spot on the charts for each version of Shameless. Okay. I'm going to say that Billy Joel's uh, probably made it all the way up to like 18. That's what I, I said higher than that even. 
the true answer is it topped out at number 40. 40, okay. I, <laughs> I felt like I was being optimistic. Um, and then I'm gonna say that Garth Brooks made it all the way to number four. Number one. Whoa! Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So I wonder if uh, Billy Joel then had to spiral out again. <laughs> based on their respective showings wow that's that's funny and they were about a year apart i think it was wow. not very long my friend tom and i will often go see more than you'd think a person could the bare naked ladies in concert we, <laughs> we went to see them a lot and the, he there's songs off their new album he will often point out because they're good songs he'll say yeah this song needs to be re-recorded by, you know, like whoever's new now, and it would just be a giant hit. Yeah. Because that's just something that happens. Like Paul McCartney's last album is good. It's a good album, but you're not going to get the radio play because you're not young and people are done with you. Yes. And right. the people who were your fans don't buy singles anymore. <laughs> right. And that's just going to happen. So, you know, I think Garth Brooks covered Shameless at the height of his powers, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, of course. So that's a, you know, and I'm probably, the arrangement's probably better. I should listen to that. I'll make a point of listening. You know what? I will, that'll be what we'll link to at the end is Shameless by Garth Brooks. So you can compare at home. Yeah, play along at home. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. All the way to number one. Yeah. yeah, I think everything that came out of his mouth went to number one for like five years there. Yeah. Well, then it makes sense then that Billy Joel's, it almost had to have been that Billy Joel's was like 40 because if it had been higher, people would remember and go, oh, this is just that Billy Joel song. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have done as well. I think if you talk to people who like country music, they would never in a million years know that Billy Joel did that song also and first. Yep. And wrote it. Yeah, and did all the things. All the things. Right. So here's the song I picked. So you picked a song that has uh, Garth Brooks involved and you know where he's working with another with a seminal artist so my baby grand oh great yeah and i'll preemptively say i don't love this song <laughs> i don't hate it yeah it's difficult to hate anything with ray charles in it yeah for sure but i have reasons to not think it's a wonderful song that we'll talk about Okay. But the interpretation. I, I have a guess as to what one of the problems might be. Yeah. And it might be uh, Billy Joel doing an impression of a guy to his face. <laughs> 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 Even though they never got together to record it. Oh, that I did not know. So they're recording in different studios. Yeah. That's funny. I guess you can kind of tell. I think you usually can tell a little bit because um, that there, Frank Sinatra did one of his duets albums. His first duets album was like, I want to do duets. And he got yeah. together with people and recorded duets. His second album with, of duets was like, this worked. Let's do that again. But I ain't flying anywhere. Yeah, I'm going to sing half a song. Yep. And then the worst is Bono. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's a point when one of the songs, whatever the stupid song they sing together is, there's a he where he goes, sing it, Frank. <laughs> Just cartoonish. <laughs> Cartoonishly stupid. One thing you don't have to say to Frank. And also, you're <laughs> not you're not a blues singer, you're not a soul singer, you're Bono. You're fucking Irish. Yeah, you got none of that exists in your blood anywhere. Not even a little bit. Sing it, Frank. Ugh. 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 
Ah, uh, great. Awesome. All right, baby grand. Baby grand. Oh my goodness, now I'm mad thinking about Bono doing that. <laughs> you ever do uh, that, by the way? You'll, for no reason, remember a thing and go, I think I just made myself mad. Oh, that's, uh, I do little else. <laughs> yeah, that's where I spend a lot of my time. Wow. I've, oh, that oh. thing that happened. Wow, that thing that happened 12 years ago. I'm mad again. Mad again. I I've gotten over it eight times. Yeah, this is the, this no material effect on my existence. But, but uh, by the way, this for sure. Uh, one of the ways I cannot exercise Taoism about that damn Bono song. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> cannot do it. I cannot make peace with it. I'm not okay that it exists. <laughs> it's a journey. You'll get there. All right, everybody, if you want to be, hey, and if you want to be mad after we sign off, you go listen to Bono and Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. What's the song? I don't know, but there's only one. So look up Bono and Frank Sinatra. If it's probably a, already in your phone. If, if there's a second one, I'm even madder. All right. <laughs> don't tell us if there's a second one. That's right.